Minority Eye recently sat down with Henry Baskin, the Executive Director of the Greater Columbia Community Relations Council, to talk about the organization's 50-year history and its role of enhancing the well-being of the community by promoting harmony, mutual respect, and justice through civil dialogue and understanding. So, Ms. Baskins, tell us a little bit about the Greater Columbia Community Relations Council. The Greater Columbia Community Relations Council is an organization that was founded in 1964. Uh, it was founded because there was a lot of turmoil in the community uh, in the mid-60s. Uh, the United States was uh, busting at the seams with racial discord, riots in the streets. And Columbia was one of the few places in the South uh, of any major size that did not have rights in the streets and we believe it's the founding of this organization that had a lot to do with that. The business community uh, came together along with USC and the governmental agency, mainly uh, the City of Columbia, and decided that we don't want our city torn apart. So what can we do? Uh, they invited some uh, business leaders, 25 uh, Caucasian business leaders to sit around the table to talk about how do we keep Columbia from being a Birmingham or a Selma. Uh, I don't sure who this statement should be credited to. I don't know whether it was Lester Bates or whether it was Hyman Rubin, two of our founders, uh, that said, folks, we're looking around the table and we're talking about uh, not exploding because of racial divide. Shouldn't we have some black people around the table? Uh, and they decided then that yes, we do. So they invited uh, 25 African American leaders to sit around the table as well. So it was 50 them meeting. Had no place to meet in the 60s. Uh, no place that would accept a black white group uh, in the 60s. So Tom Jones, who was then the president of the University of South Carolina, said, let's meet at the U USC. Uh, and that's where they met, and they met there for years. And what they did was sat around the table. I understand that some of the conversations were very contentious, but they had one rule. We make a decision in this room, and when we leave this room, as a man, and they were all men at the time, we will stick by that decision. Once the vote was taken, everybody concurred with it. So it was unity, a unified voice, about what was going to do. What were the first things they tackled? Taking down the colored only signs or the white only signs. Next they talked about hiring African Americans in places where African Americans were never hired before, would not even be considered for hire. But this organization decided that that's what we're going to tackle and they brought down the walls of segregation and through backroom uh, discussions, quietly, peacefully, uh, and with a lot of consideration involving the whole community. Okay. Nowadays, what has the mission changed or are you guys still following your founding mission? I believe we are. Uh, when I took over the organization in 2012, uh, one of the things I did was go through the history of the organization. And I found where the purpose of the organization, as stated on its charter, was to help with uh, good community relations and to help ensure equal economic opportunity. It was very interesting to me that an organization founded during the Civil Rights Movement had no mention in its founding mission about race. I think our forefathers were very uh, forward-looking. I think they understood, and I don't know how well they understood it, but I believe they understood that there were going to be other things that divide a community that had nothing to do with race, and economics was going to be the major issue. Okay. What are some of the things that you guys focus on now? We still do um, fair housing uh, seminars. We still work with um, cities and counties in, in the Midlands to educate people on fair housing. Um, we believe that everyone has a right to fair housing. And if you recall some of the 70s, even the 80s, 
there were people who were doing racial profiling or steering people away from certain neighborhoods. We don't want African Americans in our neighborhoods, and that's illegal. Uh, the federal government has said it was illegal. State uh, government regulation says it's illegal. So we educate people on the subtle ways that those things can uh, still be um, actuated in a community. Sometimes people do it not understanding that they're breaking the law. Uh, it's not malicious, they just don't understand that they are breaking the law. So we educate them on this is what you can and cannot do uh, according to the laws of the land. One of the other things that, that we, we do a, a lot of is when there is a divisive issue in the community. Uh, we put on educational forums. We bring both sides of the issue together to talk about uh, what is right for this community. You have the yes and you have the no. It's always done in a civil format, and I believe that's a good way to educate people when they hear both sides of the argument at the same time, and each side has a chance to rebut what the other side has said. That's a good educational process. We have what we call a FBI, a faith-based initiative, where we've brought a group of pastors together, and their heart is to deal with what we see going on with young people in the Midlands. Uh, a lot of youth violence, a lot of negativity around um, the youth in, in our uh, community, as in a lot of other communities. And these pastors have decided that we're going to come together across the denominational lines, uh, across uh, religious lines, and talk about ways that we can impact and have a positive impact on helping our youth be what they were created to be, productive citizens in the Midlands. Um, when I talk about the youth and, and fair housing, I also need to talk about what our board has, has championed, and, and that is there are political issues uh, throughout the Midlands and throughout the states. Uh, I think it behooves us to educate people on those, um, those issues. Uh, not make any decisions on the issue, but to educate people on what those issues are. And in fact, uh, what we have coined is uh, AME. That is, we advocate, we mediate, but we also educate.